welcome to Knowledge Empowers. As always with you, it's me, Kate. Anyaseyo. Then we have Baruš. Hello, hello, hello. We have Koláč. Dobre ráno, dobre ráno, dobre ráno. Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys see the same what we see, how Kolač is very handsome today, had a haircut, has a shirt. <laughs> yeah, we said goodbye to uh, Kolač, COVID Kolač. <laughs> so you say hello to, you know. <laughs> the working Kolač? <laughs> working Kolač, yeah. Yeah, that's like clutch. A clutch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you are listening to us, head to YouTube. Yeah. Let's see what we are talking about. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> All these changes. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, last time we st- uh, we uh, continued to talk from the storytelling to hero's journey, right? And we ended it with uh, the sentence uh you are your own hero of your own story. And with that is connected change model and uh, Mr. Hentam Kolaj <laughs> has prepared like more details about this. Share it with us. The hero's journey has certain patterns and you can watch it in our previous episode. And when we were talking uh, of it off the record, it reminded me that there is a nice change model, which really is like almost one-to-one uh, with the hero's journey. And it's model from Virginia Satir. I've learned about this model a year ago on one of the educations, and it's a model which describes how the person goes uh, through a change from the mental or emotional aspect of it. So it's not a change plan which you can like apply tomorrow, uh, but you can understand how you feel towards the change. Can you describe some of the change you went through? Can you tell us a story about how you went through a change? Wedding. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when I got married, but but are you? Do you mean more mentally, like the mental process behind? Let's let's start with this wedding and go through it as the example, uh, and and we will go step by step. So, so yeah. major changes you changing a surname for me, yeah, okay. and I need let, to let, change all of the docu- legal documents. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go a few steps back. Okay. How was it before the change, before the marriage? Like before I even know, I even know I, I'm getting married. Before, okay. before yeah, 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 like, yeah, normal. Yeah, happy like you were... living with my boyfriend. Yeah, going to work. The, the, the normal life, right? The normal life, yeah. So that is the first part of the change process and that's the late status quo. Okay. Which means that we are happy you know, with our lives as they are. There is no need for a change and nobody is poking us or motivating us to do some change. But then foreign element comes in. Do like you, a boyfriend, right? Like a boyfriend, maybe. <laughs> or even, even more specifically, uh, it could be engagement. Mm-hmm. It could be, uh, I don't know, a poster that you should get married. Was there something, uh, what, what triggered the wedding yet for you? What was the spark? I would say there were like a couple of things. One was we started things, to huh? have, um, let's say a common ownership of parts in the flat, etc. And you, and we wanted to protect ourselves from the law perspective. Uh, of course, we loved each other and wanted to move the step forward. That's what I should maybe mention the first. And a third was the element of the family, not from they were pushing us, but more from really protecting ourselves. Like if you imagine you have a really a, a potential bad mother-in-law, right? So imagine that part, so you want to protect your love, love and life, and and the the wedding make that happen. Yeah, usually the foreign element is that one spark which comes in, uh, or in in your case it was the accumulation. But at certain point, it's you started to think, okay, let's get married, mm-hmm. or uh, rather uh, maybe the wedding would be even too big, and it would be like because there are steps when it comes mm. to wedding. And the first one would be 
that's why like we should get probably engaged that's probably usually that's the first step in the wedding so some somewhere on the way there was the spark we should get engaged and either it was a comment or it was uh like this thought ah now that you mention it it was more of a discussion when because my brother got married after 10 years and we were already six years together and i was like i don't want to get married after 10 years what's the point you know <laughs> now i remember <laughs> that, that could be the triggering part yeah <gasps> but then usually after this foreign element comes some of some form of the resistance comes in you know like i don't want to get married i don't need that in other cases in the when it comes in the general uh, change i don't want to move i don't want to change the status quo itself it's a normal part of our lives that there is a protector in our brain telling us do not change a shit you are happy as you are <laughs> you know, that, 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 but that's natural that's totally natural because we are averse to a change it change brings new elements to our lives we are not sure we can overcome it there is threat everything like that so it's normal have you had some thoughts like that cat as well um, we didn't have thoughts like that. It was more of what kind of wedding. So for example, I was more of, let's just go to the place where you get married, just have two witness with you, two witnesses with you, and then just have a lunch. And interestingly enough, my husband was the one, no, I want like the proper wedding, you know, like the, <laughs> the full on, <laughs> but I don't remember things that we would go no we don't need that or no it was more like i i just yeah i still remember just that part like my brother waited 10 years i don't want to wait 10 years <laughs> it's too long <laughs> yeah we are gonna get there one of the parts which you are you might be describing is already the chaos part where everything seems fuzzy you don't know where is the end result, when it's going to happen, mm. how it's going to look like. You don't know when the change and it's going to be applied and how you are going to feel at the end. And in these two cases, in the resistance and in the chaos part, usually this protector is very strong and it can drag you up and down. Uh, you can get from the chaos back to the resistance and screw it all. I'm not going to change. And, and it's going to take you back to the status quo. These were all the elements which we were already discussing in the discounting part. Mm -hmm. So you may not even like tell yourself or agree with yourself that I have an issue or that if it's a reasonable issue I need to solve or that I'm the one to be solving that. So all these discounting parts are taking in these two elements. Yeah, and you can you can listen to our discounting part uh, that we already recorded. So yeah, look for it on our channel. And after this chaos part, and it, it, there comes integration. And it might be that we haven't identified the specific parts which we were describing before, because the part where you said, like, I don't want to wait 10 years to get married. That could be already the integration, because integration part is the change process, is when you accept the change and you, so, you say your, to yourself that, oh, I'm going to do that. It's okay, and I'm going to change. So the thought which you were saying, like, oh, I remember this specific moment, it could be because it was the leap actually where you get from the chaos part of where I'm actually going to end to the thought that actually I'm going to get married. You saw the light at the end of the tunnel. That's the integration part we start thinking of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, my very strong feelings or the memory was Again, just the protection, because at that time we were living in Michal's flat. And if something would happen to him, I would literally end up with my butt on the street, right? Because I'm not legally bounded to him at all to in inherit anything. So I just remember like very vividly the emotion of the fear that if something happens to Michal, and I would end up like with my naked butt on the street, literally, that we really need to protect ourselves uh, for ourselves. If something happens to one another, 
you are the privileged person to first inherit and, and be protected. So that, that feeling was really strong that I still remember. Yeah, I, I can imagine fear is a really strong emotion and it can motivate you to do something or to avoid doing something. Yeah. In this case, it, it sounds like fear was motivating you to actually do that. Yeah, and because after the wedding, the whole emotion just like dropped dramatically down. Like, mm -hmm. whoa, okay. <sighs> so. Yeah, and that's exactly how you are describing the new status quo. So everything happened, you went through the change, through the chaos, you found the way out and you reached the new status quo. You did that. Oof, everything is behind me and I'm a new person. And, and with a new surname. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally a new person. <laughs> and then 15 years later. <laughs> I'm still the same person. Uh, still, still the person with, the, with that surname. <laughs> actually new one again. <laughs> yeah, Her, again. Uh, adjusted, adjusted. Adjusted surname. <laughs> what COVID brings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID, another foreign agent, right? Yeah, foreign for those, element. For those who don't know, Cat has changed her surname and removed a few of those letters at the end because that's now legally possible. Exactly. And she removed the suffix at the end of her surname. So that's the yes. change which happened. Yeah. No, but because no, she's female anymore. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. For the foreigners, the OVA at the end of the surname, that's how you can identify that's a woman. And that's what I got rid of it. So. COVID, I just got bored. <laughs> I discovered one interesting element. I'm not sure if it's valid for this podcast, but just to share with you that once you get married, people around you start taking you that two of you are like a one person instead of still that that person is an individual and that person is an individual and they might let's say if they don't like my husband they automatically don't like me uh, or, or the other way around if they don't like me they don't like Michal because they think we are because we married we are the same and they, they keep forgetting that these are two individuals with two different personalities they they know why they are together and how they uh, complement one another but this is very common mistake people do judge the married couple as like one that's like a one person instead of two individuals so this is how you go through the change and it really resembles hero's journey you know like you have the status quo you have the calling which in this case is this foreign element and then you need to go through the change itself you need to slay the dragon which is the chaos so that you can get the reward in terms of experience or knowledge and that's the uh, that's what the happens at the end, which is not really mentioned here uh, in Virginia Satyr model. But again, if you go through the change, you are taking over something, and you bring yourself to a new status quo. So mm -hmm. you uh, and you have the happy ending at the end. Hopefully. Let me revise it a little bit. Let's say if I would know this model even before I got married, would I be able to? prepare myself for specific parts? I think so. I mean, it's up to you uh, if you can predict or can't predict. The thing is that this is how the change normally behaves. So, and it happens to people that they punish themselves for something which is normal. Mm -hmm. Like I shouldn't have these faults, you know, that I don't like my children, but that's normal because that happens, you know, you're tired, people are getting tired and it can happen. So it can happen that. So it can happen that during the time you are with your hubby or with your spouse or with your husband, there will be a moment where you will have this thought that I hate him, or I hate her, I hate her. And that's normal because you can be tired. You can be angry. That's fine. That's the same. Like with the change, if you say yourself, like I'm I'm not able to do that. I'm not able to do that. And you say like, okay, now because I said that to myself, I'm not going to go through the change. No, it's fine. Resistance is normal. We have these protectors in mind. 
just go with that. It's going to be fine at the end. So it's like to acknowledge that, wait a minute, now I have a resistance and I can sort of like write it down and then reason with myself, right? Like, what would it bring me? What are the pros and cons so I can make a better decision or get quicker through it uh, or have even a better emotions with it? versus just yes. stay in the resistance moment like mm -hmm. nope. yes, exactly mm -hmm. you can also realize that if you do like self check on all of the changes which you went through you can find out which of the stages is the toughest for you uh, or there is a stage which you do not acknowledge a lot uh, like for example mm -hmm. for me i do not usually acknowledge the end uh, and, and in terms that i feel like this is the end of the change i usually dive into a different one Mm -hmm. and try to go through the change process and again learn something new gain something new and i do not actually see the end result that's us as the uh, as the ones always seeking uh, a new horizon you know i'm not appreciating the little gold on the way and having this small celebration like i overcome it and i usually dive into directly into new a new part so you can also do this sort of self reflections on what to improve on myself in terms of how to overcome the change or what to do with the change. Oh, or what fulfills you, right? Exactly. What's your drive? Ah, and it's not just about you, but it's also about the others. You know, you can be a foreign element to someone else. You can be a new leader and you are joining a new team. How the rest of the team is going to feel like. A new, team, them, the the team. new team, the same team, that's yeah, even worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it can happen and you can start thinking about the others also, you know, like, okay, probably they are going to feel the resistance. They are going to be in chaos and it may take some time before they get to the integration part or we get to the new status quo. When once everybody is happy with me as a new manager or new leader, mm. same can happen with marriages, with uh, uh, new elements like buying a house instead of a flood, you know, all these things play a role in our lives. And so with that, we hope we helped you again to learn a new change model that you can apply and use pros and cons and really uh, do a better self-reflection to accept a challenge or accept a change and, and move forward quicker. So with that, I'm going to say Sugohasha Smida. Bye bye. Bye bye, make it up, make me Ciao ti, ciao ti. This podcast represents our own opinions, experience, and our own ideas. We do not represent any official statement from our employers, and this is not their official channel representing the company.